day and welcome to the Thursday, March 25th edition of the Island Set Sport Brief. I'm Earl Basley. The International Olympic Committee has congratulated the Tokyo 2020 Organizing Committee on the start of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Torch Relay earlier today in Fukushima, Japan. The grand start of the Olympic Torch Relay marks the start of the Olympic Flames journey across Japan before it arrives in Tokyo for the opening of the Olympic Games on July 23rd this year. During last night's IslandStats.com sports show, Brenda Dale, the chef de mission for the Olympic team, spoke about the recent announcement that no overseas fans will be allowed to attend the game. I mean, I can't, even as a, a parent, imagine what it would be like um, to have your child in the Olympics and not, you know, be able to um, to be there, to be there and, and, and see them. And um, I, I think that for all of the athletes, it's, you know, it's, uh, that was some pretty devastating news. Um, there, there is a little quirk with it, though. And the quirk is that, um, you know, obviously they aren't having international spectators at the events. But what we have heard um, is that even though, for example, our athletes have been guided, the, the principles are that two days they're asked to, to not come into the village until five days before their event and two days after their event. However, after that, they can leave the village but be in Japan. So uh, in a meeting earlier this week, I said, well, that it kind of seems um, contradictory now <clears throat> that you say that you know, you want the athletes to leave and that you aren't going to have international um, spectators in the events. But are you saying that you're still going to have international um, visitors allowing international tourists to Japan? So I don't know if that's going to open the door to some, um, you know, some families still saying, well, we're, we're, we're going to go. But um, we're going to go to Japan, but we will um, uh, we'll just have our own sort of party. I mean, they would only be able to see their, you know, their uh, family member on um, on a screen or whatever. But maybe it is a way of them still being there and feeling part of it. I don't know. Lori Lewis, the chef de mission for the Paralympic Games, also shared her thoughts. The whole family was planning to go um, and make it a family trip. So it is, uh, you know, it's very sad that, that they won't be able to go now. Um, but the the one thing that Tokyo was trying to do, and they would have just put on a spectacular show for both the Olympics and the Paralympics. So this is all just so very sad for them. Um, but one of the programs that they were doing was uh, they were uh, linking each country with a host town. Um, so Bermuda is linked with a Kata town. Um, and their idea was that um, like Bermuda would go to a Kata town before the the Olympics and Paralympics and, and meet the, the residents there. And the athletes would go into the schools and, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful program. But of course now with COVID, that's not going to happen. Um, but I think the plan is that Akata Town will send people to um, Tokyo. So they will be in the towns and they will have their banners for Bermuda and that kind of thing. Um, the athletes, Jessica and, and I think Flora and one other from the Olympic side, um, yeah. agreed that they will um, do some Zoom links for, you know, in the next couple of months um, with some schools there. And so that they, the children there will get to know our athletes and that kind of thing. So, you know, so that part hopefully will go ahead and we will have some people there that can cheer for Bermuda. Um, it is, you know, it, it is very sad. You know, the stands won't. Um, so it is what it is, I guess. And yeah, it's the times we're living in. The Bermuda National Athletic Association's president, Donna Rayner, spoke with NACTEC members to give them an update on Carissa 2021. Raina told stakeholders, we are looking to host a very safe event with all protocols in place. The newly agreed upon date gives us more time to prepare and hopefully we have a better handle on COVID-19 by then. 
I think vaccination is going to play a crucial role as well. We recognize that this is not going to be an easy task. We have several hurdles to overcome, but I am confident in my team that we can work together to make sure the games happen. Reina concluded by telling the stakeholders, all attendees must present a negative COVID-19 PCR test taken no more than three days before their arrival, while athletes are encouraged to be vaccinated. It is not a requirement for the game or for entry into Bermuda. Dwayne Pearman proved too strong for the field as the Bermuda Professional Golf Association's championships came to an end at the Tucker's Point Golf Course. Pearman shot a final round one under par 69 to finish with an overall score of 210. Two shots back was Chaka De Silva, who ended the final day going head-to-head -head with Pearman all the way until the 18th hole before shooting a bogey to end his round at 1 over par 71. Scott Roy had a slow start making early bogeys, but kept third place with a total of 218. Andrew Trott finished fourth with a total of 219, while Derek Douglas finished one stroke back. Ketura Bulford Trot represented Montverde Academy Women's Track and Field at the 46th Montverde Eagle Invitational 2021. Bulford Trot was clocked at 1275, winning heat four of the women's 100 meters, which saw her finish first overall. Competing in heat four of the women's 200 meters, Bulford Trot once again recorded a victory at a time of 26-76. Scott Redmond and his Bloomsburg University men's tennis teammates suffered their second loss of the season, falling 5-2 to Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference West opponent Mercyhurst University. Bloomsburg University picked up a doubles point as sophomore Redmond and a teammate playing at the number three double spot picked up the win 7-6. Cal Hartman and his University of Southern Indiana men's soccer teammates and Rockhurst University battled to a 1-1 draw in Springfield, Illinois. Meanwhile, CONCACAF and FIFA would have concerns of COVID-19 to deal with, but what happened in Haiti would really concern the heads of football even more as the Belize Football Federation has expressed its disappointment and disgust after a bus taking the national team to their hotel in Haiti was held up by an armed gang. Due to recent increase of the COVID-19 cases in Bermuda, the Department of Youth, Sport and Recreation has mandated that all sports revert back to stage two of the return to play guidelines effective immediately. As a result, the Bermuda Volleyball Association has announced all junior and senior national team training is now suspended until further notice. The Bermuda Volleyball Association also advised its members that the corporate volleyball tournament Spring League and the Bermuda Open are all officially cancelled. And that's a look at this Thursday, March 25th edition of the Island Stats Sports Brief. I'm Earl Basin.